Today we are going to talk about the uh, window that uh, are reasonable and rational. Very good. And as we know that uh, if you are rational, you are always thinking based on mass. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are doing the calculation mm -hmm. and you are comparing with the figures. Mm -hmm. If that's larger, you might choose it. Mm -hmm. But reasonable is very complicated. Yes. Then yes. you might have something uh, very subjective inside it. Okay, let's give an example. Like um, when you sign a contract with each other, there could be some, uh, each of you gave something. Then if we consider both parties can gain 100 unit mm -hmm. in total in this transaction, mm -hmm. then normally people will try to split mm -hmm. what they gain from this transaction. Mm -hmm. If we are thinking about the rational only, mm -hmm. if one party have 99 unit mm -hmm. and another party, the other party have only one unit, mm -hmm. if you are rational, the party have one unit may also agree with this transaction. Mm -hmm. But if you think about whether he's reasonable, mm -hmm. normally most people will deny that because mm -hmm. that's not fair. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about this on the law economics? Well, I would say that a reasonable person mm -hmm. is the person of the law. Mm -hmm. The legal ideal is to be a reasonable person. Mm -hmm. And the standard of the reasonable person is used mm -hmm. in deciding um, contracts or torts or various mm -hmm. kinds of disputes. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea of the rational person is the idea of economics. And the idea of the rational person mm -hmm. is someone who is consistent mm -hmm. in pursuing what his ends happen to be. Mm -hmm. So a reasonable person is a rational person mm -hmm. who also has good ends. Mm -hmm. A reasonable person is someone who is rational in the economic sense. They're instrumental. They achieve, they pursue their ends consistently. Mm -hmm. But it's also the case that their ends are socialized. Mm -hmm. the, it's the, the, it's the, it's ends that are admired and appreciated by society. Mm -hmm. So I just think that a, a rational person is someone who's consistent and a reasonable person is someone who also has good ends. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to take... What do you mean by ends? Okay. Well, uh, let me take a historical example mm -hmm. uh, of uh, Adolf Hitler, the Nazi mm -hmm. um, leader. Uh, Adolf Hitler wanted to murder the Jews of the world. Mm -hmm. Terrible, terrible genocidal crime. Mm -hmm. um, but he went about doing it in an extremely systematic way. Mm -hmm. He pursued that end rationally. But the end that he was pursuing was completely unreasonable. Mm -hmm. To say it's unreasonable isn't enough, it's repulsive. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was, a, he was a rational person, but not a reasonable person. Mm -hmm. Whereas a good judge, mm -hmm. the judge that uh, Confucius admired, mm -hmm. that person is socialized. He, he understands mm -hmm. what the um, responsibilities are of a judge mm -hmm. to others. Mm -hmm. And he tries to be rational in fulfilling his responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But the responsibilities themselves are goals or ends mm -hmm. that are shaped by his socialization and by morality. Okay, so we can see that reasonable uh, might contain something somehow subjected. Oh yes. Yeah, you you are considering whether you should yes. be the end, but not not more than subjective. I think that in a sense everyone's objectives are sub subjective. They're part. Mm -hmm. There's something that you carry inside you. Mm -hmm. The ends that you seek. Mm -hmm are ends that are inside you. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, those ends can be socialized and moral mm -hmm. and proper, mm -hmm. or they cannot be. Mm -hmm. And 
in either case, if you pursue those ends, whatever they may be, rationally, mm -hmm. consistently, excuse me, uh, consistently, consistently, consistently. Then, you're, then you're rational. Okay. So, but we can see that now today we got the AI, the uh, AI, you yeah. can consider that uh, artificial intelligence <coughs> and they are machines. They are machines, yes. They are very good at doing things rationally. Like, okay, we can see the, the alpha go. Yeah. And also when you deep blue, when you play the chess. Yes, yes. And the player may feel they want to retaliate yes. when they are failing. Yes. They've got so many emotional feelings yes. inside that and they could make a mistake. Yes. But the computer will not yes. do it in this way. The yes. only problem is the whether their calculation is correct. In yes. the, uh, if they are doing the best way to do the calculation and the methodology they use to calculate. That's, That's the, right. what the computer's problem. That's what they do. But when you are human, yes. then the player, when they okay, play with the computer, and yes. competing with the computer, they feel may, maybe they feel scared yes. that they are very good at computing. Yes. And you may feel frustration. Yes. But the computer will not. Even the computer is losing. Well, a computer doesn't feel anything. Yes. So that's highly rational. Um, if it, it, in some aspect, of course. Well, it a computer has. The computer has goals or ends that are given to it by the programmer, mm -hmm. but the computer has no feelings about anything, including those ends or those goals. Mm -hmm. So they're not like the goals of living creatures, mm -hmm. because the goals of living creatures are also felt. Mm -hmm. Machines can't feel. Maybe someday we can we could make mm -hmm. a machine that could feel, mm -hmm. in the sense that we could make a creature that could feel that was made out of pieces of metal rather than pieces of uh, organic material. Mm -hmm. It's possible that we could do that. Mm -hmm. um, but until the creature can feel, it's not uh, an animal, it's not alive. Mm -hmm. And the many attributes of reasonableness that mm -hmm. uh, we uh, admire cannot exist outside of mm -hmm. a creature with feelings. Mm -hmm. Now, if we just want to win at chess, if that's the only goal is to win at chess, and the fact that Deep Blue has no feeling about winning at chess, but the reason, one of being the reasons he's winning. winning is he don't, somehow he's not interrupted by the emotion. Oh, I see. Well, uh, yes, but the interruption by the emotions is also uh, an essential part of creativity. Yeah, yeah. yes, you are right. So I, I don't know that, um, I don't know that the, I don't know whether Deep Blue is, is creative or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. I don't know how it would, would be creative. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, we human beings are one of the ways that we human beings are creative is that we mm -hmm. have feelings about mm -hmm. things that we can't prove, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Everybody in business knows this. Yep. Because in business, calc you have to do all your calculations and you have yep. to do it right. Yep. And then when it comes to the big decision, mm -hmm. the calculations will not tell you what to do. Yep. Here is about uncertainty. It's yes, it is. It's and it's the form of the uncertainty. It's not clear. It's not a. It's not a lack of. It's not a lack of computing capacity that mm -hmm. makes it impossible. It's like, mm -hmm. like this. Suppose that, um, as you know, in a zero-sum game, the mm -hmm. optimal strategy involves randomizing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. You randomize uh, to make yourself unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine a business community where there are lots of people mm -hmm. involved in games with each other, some of which are zero-sum. Mm -hmm. So in some of those games, people are randomizing mm -hmm. as the best strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably many equilibria or no equilibria okay. that could exist. Yep. And the businessman has got to have intuition yep. about what will happen anyway. 
Yep. It may not be a, it may not be an equilibrium result. Mm -hmm. It may or there may be an equilibrium that's uh, selected from many possible equilibria. Yep. But something's going to happen, mm -hmm. and the businessman is going to follow instincts and feelings yep. about what it will be. Yeah, and you can see that even the game theory develops some mechanism to maybe people make a mistake when they try to make a strategy. Yeah. Yeah. If you are a computer, you're always reasonable and try to find an equilibrium. But if a person, you might not <laughs> you just do a, make a mistake or you just yes. follow your instinct. Yes, well. And you choose something. There's so many problems that aren't computable. Yeah. And also, you can see that you got the mechanism, like you use the uh, probability to multiply with the outcome. Then you uh, plus all of them. Yes. Yeah. You can do the calculation in this way, and yes. in the, some investment, this is a very important calculation that you consider. Yes. Okay, you got different probability, and yes. everything, and every probability with an event it has some outcome. Then yes. you try to add them all up, then you can see the yes. think about the investment. Yes, and. So this uncertainty also let us think about the evidence, like in the yes. court. Yes. Because you cannot find the truth. Yes. The actual truth. You sh you yes. are somehow by it's somehow proved by the procedure. That's right. That's right. And in every court, there's a pro a probability that the evidence is not sufficient, is insufficient, and it might not show the to choose back to the back to the day when it happened. Yeah, so that's right. How, uh, what's your suggestion from the law and economic to deal with this one? Well, it's not the case that we can replace judges with machines. Mm -hmm. It's not the case that we can have machines give the calculation mm -hmm to decide who's right and wrong in a case and who should win. Mm -hmm. I don't think this uh, can ever happen. Uh, it is the case, though, that when people reason about probabilities, they make mm -hmm. terrible mistakes. Mm -hmm. They're inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And one of the great, comp uh, one of the great contributions mm -hmm. of law and economics is to begin to make the procedures more consistent that mm -hmm. we follow. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you an example of the inability of people to think mm -hmm. probabilistically, even in simple cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, you take a deck of cards. Okay. So there's there's uh, uh, an equal number of red mm -hmm. cards and an equal number of black cards. Yes. Okay. And the black cards, one of the suits of the black cards is the spade, okay? Mm -hmm. The black is the spade. So what you do is you show the person the deck of cards and you take all the spades out. Mm -hmm. So uh, now there are uh, two red cards for every one black card, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you shuffle the deck and you mix it up. Mm -hmm. And then you say, now I want you to guess what the card will be that I turn over. Mm -hmm. And so you turn over a card, and then you shuffle the deck again, mm -hmm. and you turn over a card, and you yep. shuffle the deck again. Yep. Well, every time that the person guesses mm -hmm. what color the card will be, mm -hmm. it's two times as likely to be red as black, right? Yep. Because it's yep. two, okay. Yep. However, many people will not guess red every time which is what they ought to do. Yeah. They'll oh. guess red a lot of the time and then sometimes they'll guess black. Ah. Some people will even guess red twice and black once. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's the simplest calculation in the world. You know that every time yeah. you turn the deck over, it's twice as likely it'll be red and black, but some people can't make that simple calculation. And if mm -hmm. you think about all the probabilistic calculations that are involved in a trial, mm -hmm. that means that human beings are going to make a lot of errors. Because people uh, are complicated. Well, it's also because people are ignorant about statistics. Okay. They haven't been trained 
Um, so from this part, there's insufficiently rational. Let, let me give you, let me, yeah, they're insufficiently rational, exactly. They're reasonable people, mm -hmm. but they're insufficiently rational. Yep. Uh, let, let me give you another example of this. Um, I remember when I first got a little handheld mm -hmm. uh, calculator. Okay. You know, we didn't used to have them, and then electronics got good, yeah. and handheld calculators. And there was a button, and you press the button, and what happened was this. Suppose you had the number 20%. Mm -hmm. When you push the button, it would convert the percent into a decimal. That is to say, instead of 20%, it would say 0 0.2. Yeah. Well, you have the number 0.4, mm -hmm. you press the button and it would convert 0.4 into 40%. Yes. Okay? Okay. How could people be so stupid that mm -hmm. they needed to push a button mm -hmm. to convert a decimal into a percentage? <laughs> <laughs> but there were so many people who couldn't convert a decimal into a percentage that they put the they put a whole button on the machine just to do that for you. Oh, you got that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could handle it. I think that's not it. quite necessary in China. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope it's not necessary anymore, but that was in the beginning when we first had calculators. Uh, okay. <laughs> and this, so, but maybe, actually, if People might think 40% is larger than 0.4 instantly. Yeah, Maybe, yeah, yeah. because it looks like larger. And the unit you yeah. use to count, count it is different. Yeah, that's right. That's true. And I'm still thinking about a very interesting topic about uh, here you calculate the speed by miles. Yes. Miles. But in, like in China, you use kilometers. kilometers. So will this has some impact about speeding. Yes, it, well that's right. It, 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 does, it does matter the units in which you count, even though it doesn't change the underlying thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember I had a conversation with uh, an Italian person years ago, mm -hmm. back before there was a European currency when mm -hmm. Italy had its own money. Mm -hmm. And Italian money wasn't worth very much. Mm -hmm. you, know, you needed like 20,000 Italian lira, mm -hmm. it's like two dollars. I went to Cambodia, and almost the same feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, actually, I don't even know how much I use yeah. because you give them. I want to buy some uh, okay coconut water, yeah. and the, uh, there are so many zeros. So and, it's, <laughs> and actually, you give them the money, and they give you back. You don't do the calculation. <laughs> okay, I don't understand. So I said to my Italian friend, okay, I, I don't remember the numbers, but let's say the numbers are two hundred thousand lira. Two dollars. So let's say it's that. Two hundred. Yeah, it was, it was something huge. <laughs> I, said, I, said, okay. well, I said, look, look, why don't you just yeah, just re right. renumber the currency, call it yeah. new lira, yeah, and say two new lira is two hundred thousand old lira. So then yeah. two new lira would be two dollars. Yeah, I, I'm that curious be, why they are doing so. Okay, you know what he said? Why he said he said this. Do you think that any Italian man would be happy without having several million in his pocket? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that looks looks very reasonable, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. Look, look how rich I am. <laughs> so this also raises another topic: Will the country has a larger figure in their money make a more mistake in the calculation? Yeah, well, I think you're right. They do make more mistakes. Um, yeah, I, I, my father had a very good rule for traveling, mm -hmm. and what he said was this: when you're buying something, never worry about paying the tourist tax. Mm -hmm. That is to say, never worry if they charge you five percent more or ten percent more. Mm -hmm. He said, but don't leave it. Don't miss a digit. Never pay ten times. Ah, yeah, more. Yeah, I understand. And. Uh, that was my father's rule. A very good rule. It, yep. it makes you relax when you travel and not worry so much. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, with those currencies that were so worthless, mm -hmm. you did make a, you did you did lose a digit. You would lose track. Oh, that's highly sometimes. possible. Yeah. This number is very very yeah. large, and you are not getting used to it. Yeah. It m might happen. Yeah. I guess there 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 must be. Currencies like that today. Mm -hmm. The Venezuelan currency is like that today. 
Okay. I, I, I don't go to countries like that anymore. I, I, I used to often be in countries where there's a huge, huge number of digits. <laughs>